Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'll start off with a definition of the Löwenheim Coulomb number, k. So let's go. Let k be a cardinal. An extension of first order logic is said to have Löwenheim Coulomb number k if for every set gamma of sentences of L, if gamma has a model and the length of gamma is less than or equal to k. Then gamma has a model of size at most k. So if L has the downward Löwenheim Coulomb property, the L uh, has Löwenheim Coulomb number L of null. The converse is not necessarily true, but if a sentence a phi has a countable model, then it is not necessarily true that every model of phi has a countable substructure that models phi as the downward Löwenheim Coulomb property asserts. Then I'll make a small proposition. So let me see here. Uh, what was it? <laughs> uh, wait. Uh, let L, yes, let L be an extension of first order logic that, ha that has Löwenheim Coulomb number L of null. Then suppose that L subscript omega 1 omega is less than or equal to L. Then for any substructure m and n, if there exists an L sentence that holds in m but not n, then there exists such a sentence in L subscript omega 1 omega. I'll then make a proof. Um, so let the... Uh, or suppose that m is equivalent or congruent to L subscript omega 1 omega times n. Uh, also suppose for a contradiction that m models phi and n models the negation of phi. For some L sentence phi, let u be the underlying set of m and let v be the underlying set of n. By the isomorphism property, we may assume that u and v are disjoint. By the relational property, we may assume that the vocabulary V of M and N is relational. Since L was Löwenheim's Coulomb number, L F null, and phi is uh, satisfiable, um, phi has a countable model. By the small vocabulary property, we may assume V is countable. So we describe a structure M having U have, uh, or wait, having u in union with v as an underlying set. The vocabulary for m is v subscript ef is equal to v union with the set of pu, pv, r1, r2, and so on and so forth. The unary relation pu defines the set u and the unary relation pv defines the set v in m. So M is isomorphic to the substructure P subscript U of M of M and N is isomorphic to the substructure P subscript V of M of M. By the relativization property, there exists a sentence phi subscript U of L such that for any V subscript EF structure S, S models phi subscript U if and only if p subscript u of s models phi. <coughs> Likewise, there is a sentence the negation of phi subscript v of l such that uh, such that s models the negation of phi subscript v. If and only if p subscript v of s models the negation of phi. Each rn in the vocabulary of m is a 2n array relation. We now list countable many first order sentences that describe the interpretations of these relations in M for each n an element of M. So let M model uh, Rn of x1, x2, x3 and so on and so forth till xn and y1, y2, y3 and so on to uh, yn, uh, that then gives that the disjuncture for
from i equal to 1 to n of p subscript u of xi uh, in this juncture with the disjunction from i equal 1 to n of p subscript v of yi. Uh, so for each n an element of n and each quantifier free first order v formula theta in n free variables m models r n of x1 x2 x3 till xn y1 y2 y3 till yn that is that theta times the parenthesis x1 x2 x3 till xn if and only if theta times the parenthesis y1 y2 y3 till yn that is if rn of a1 a2 a3 till an b1 b2 b3 till bn holds then uh, the function f of ai equals bi in a partial isomorphism from p of n to p v of n moreover for every n in n uh, the natural numbers that is uh, n models rn of x1 x2 till xn y1 y2 till yn that gives that for all x there exists a y in R n plus 1 of x1, x2, x3 till xn, x, uh, y1, y2, y3 till yn, and then y. Then n models R n of x1, x2, x3 till xn, y1, y2, y3 till yn. That is, that for all y, there exists an x in R n plus 1 of x1, x2, x3 till xn, x, yn, y1, y2, y3 till yn, y. Finally, n models, for every x there exists a y in R1 of x and y. In this juncture, when for all y there exists an x of r1 of x and y. We have listed countably many first order sentences that holds in M. Uh, let then capital Phi subscript EF be the conjuncture of these sentences. We claim that for any uh, V subscript EF structure S, S models capital Phi subscript EF if and only if PU of S is equivalent or congruent to L subscript omega 1 omega times PV of S. That is, capital Phi EF expresses that duplicator wins EF subscript omega of PUS PVS. The final of these sentences. Uh, states that duplicator can match spoilers first move. My previous sentence expresses that duplicator can continue to match spoilers indefinitely. By the closure property, capital Phi EF in disjuncture with Phi U in disjuncture with the negation of Phi V is equivalent to the sentence of L. This sentence is satisfiable since M is a model. Since L has Löwenheim school and number L of null, there exists a countable model C of this sentence. Since C models capital Phi EF, PU of C uh, is congruent or equivalent to L subscript omega 1 omega PV of C by our proposition, uh, PU of C is equivalent to PV of C. Since C models phi u in this juncture with the negation of phi v, p u of C models phi, and p v of C models the negation of phi. This contradicts the isomorphism property, and that's the proof of our proposition. To state Lindstrom's theorem in its most general form, we consider a weak version of the compactness property. So, let k be a cardinal. An extension of first order logic is said to have compactness number k if for any set of gamma of sentences of the logic, if the length of gamma is less than or equal to k and every finite subset of gamma has a model, then gamma has a model. So, what is the Lindstrom theorem? Here it comes. This is the peak of the two videos. I'm really sorry, this video isn't good, but anyway. If an extension L 
of first order logic has Löwenheim school number aleph null and compactness number aleph null, then L has the same expressive power as first order logic. Our proof. Let L subscript FO denote the first order logic. We must show that L is less than or equal to L F O. That is, each sentence phi of L is equivalent to some first order sentence psi of phi or psi phi. So we need to make a claim. Uh, if M is congruent to N, then M models phi if and only if N models phi. Our proof. Suppose for a contradiction that M congruent to N, M models phi and n models the negation of phi. Recall our sentence that phi e f in this juncture with phi u in this juncture with the negation of phi v from the proof of our proposition. This sentence that phi e f is the conjunction of countable many first order sentences. Let us now regard phi e f as a countable set. The relativization property guarantees that uh, the existence of the L sentence phi u and the negation of phi v. So we can claim that phi e f in union with the set phi u and the negation of phi v has a countable model m. Since m is congruent to n, duplicator wins e f subscript k of m and n for each k and element of the natural numbers. It follows from the definition of phi ef that every finite subset of phi ef in union with phi u and the negation of phi v is satisfiable. Um, since L has a compactness number aleph null, this set has a model. Since L has a Löwenheim school number aleph null, this countable set of sentences has a countable model. This leads to the same contradiction as the proof of our proposition. This contradiction proves the claim. It remains to be shown that Lindstrom's theorem follows from the claim. So we must show that phi is equivalent to the same first order sentence. So let M model phi. Since L has Levenheim school number aleph null, we may assume that M is countable. Since L has compactness number aleph null, we can use the following compactness argument that was used repeatedly in my last video, I think. Let then T be the first order theory of M. Let C be the set of all psi an element of T, such that each model of phi also models psi. That is, C is the set of consequences of phi in T. We need to make a second claim that every model of, say, delta models phi for some finite number phi of c. So our proof. Suppose not. Then, by compactness, c in union with the negation of phi has a model n1. Let t1 be the first order theory of n1. Then, I think, consider the set t1 in union with phi, the set of phi. If this set does not have a model, then some finite subset does not have a model, again by compactness. So for some theta in T1, phi in union with a set of theta has no model and the negation of theta is an element of C. This contradicts the fact that C is a subset of T1 and T1 is consistent. This contradiction proves that T1 in union with the set of phi does have, does have a model N2. But now N1 is congruent to N2 since T1 is complete. T N2 models phi and N1 models the negation of phi. This directly contradicts our first claim and proves claim 2. So Delta and phi have the same models, and phi is equivalent to the conjunction of the finitely many first order sentences in delta. And yeah, we're done. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.